from the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. The 1995 Holiday Lectures on Science. This year's lectures on the double life of RNA will be presented by Dr. Thomas R. Check, Howard Hughes Medical Institute investigator, distinguished professor at the University of Colorado Boulder, and 1989 Nobel laureate in chemistry. The fourth lecture will discuss life at the end of the chromosome, another RNA machine. And now, to introduce our program, the Vice President for Grants and Special Programs of the Howard Hughes Medical Institute, Dr. Joseph Perpich. Welcome back to the Howard Hughes Medical Institute for the fourth and final holiday lecture on science. Our speaker is Dr. Thomas Check, distinguished professor at the University of Colorado Boulder and an investigator of the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. Dr. Check's fourth lecture feature, focuses on RNA interactions with telomeres the DNA found at the ends of chromosomes. That magical, mysterious molecule called DNA and its cousin RNA are engaged at the ends of chromosomes to guide the aging of the cell and under certain circumstances, transforming it into a cancer cell. Tom Check has called this interplay chromosome end games. Tom will tell how he and scientists and laboratories around the world are pursuing the secrets of the telomere and the enzyme telomerase. Once again, they are going boldly where none has gone before. Tom? Thank you, Joe. For this final lecture, I would like to switch a bit from uh, RNA to talking about chromosomal DNA. But as you can already tell from the hint given in the title to my talk, RNA is going to creep back into the story, although that was not clear uh, to the researchers who were first investigating questions of chromosome end replication. You can also see that I've changed sweaters again. I'm now a cell biologist. How does a cell biologist differ from a molecular biologist? Well, there are many people who consider themselves simultaneously cell biologists and molecular biologists, but if I had to give a simple definition, I would probably say that a cell biologist is more interested in questions of where molecules are located inside cells rather than simply what those molecules are and how they function. And you'll see an example of experiments in which we actually determine the location of molecules within uh, living cells later in this talk. So in the first slide, I will show you some human chromosomes, a picture that I took when I wasn't too much older than you, when I was a first-year graduate student at Berkeley. These are human chromosomes, and as you know, a chromosome is made up of the double helix of DNA. There's a continuous molecule of DNA going from one end to the other, coated with proteins which allow it to be stained on a, a light microscope uh, slide, on a glass slide. The amount of DNA in each of these individual chromosomes is about this long, several centimeters long. The total amount of DNA in the set of human chromosomes is as tall as I am, if you would tie all of those DNA molecules end to end. And that's true for every one of the billions of cells in your body. Now, you, you're all incredulous. You don't believe that. How could it be that DNA molecule uh, this large and, in fact, 46 of them could be wrapped up in something as small as a living cell. And, of course, the answer is it's a very, very skinny molecule. It's only 20 angstroms across. And so the fact that it's very long means that the packaging problem is a very intriguing one. Uh, it has to be wrapped up in a way that it can be uh, safely packaged and be divided between daughter cells during cell division, but at the same time it has to be accessible to, for example, RNA polymerase, which makes the RNA copies of the DNA, and DNA polymerase, one of the enzymes that is responsible for copying the chromosome and making two DNA molecules where there previously was only a single molecule. The um, 
other question that might come up when you look at chromosomes is what happens here at the end? Does the DNA just stop? Or is there some specialized structure at the very tips of the chromosomes? And uh, there, feeling that the DNA might not just stop, but that there must be something very specialized there, came from some of the early uh, fruit fly molecular geneticists who noticed that um, if you fragmented chromosomes with, for example, X irradiation, and similar experiments were done by Barbara McClintock in her uh, work with corn chromosomes. And what these workers noticed was that if you fragment a chromosome randomly, those raw ends are very unstable. They will become degraded or they'll rejoin with other raw ends of broken chromosomes, perhaps giving new combinations of chromosomal material. So the natural ends of chromosomes are very stable. So they must be something other than they must be, have a different property than just a randomly broken chromosome. And that was where the concept of a telomere, or a specialized structure at the end of the chromosome, uh, was first devised. What are some of the functions of these telomeres? Well, as I've already suggested, they act as a cap to cap off and stabilize the end of the chromosome, preventing it from undergoing unwanted rearrangements. They allow complete replication of the very end of the chromosome, something that DNA polymerase, which copies or reproduces the middle part of the chromosome, is unable to do. And I'll talk about that in more detail later. There's much indirect evidence that they help locate chromosomes within nuclei and provide a higher level of, of organization of the genetic material within the nucleus, although that's an area that uh, still isn't really well understood at the molecular level, the exact molecules that the telomere plugs into to give this nuclear localization, which is why I add the question mark after it. And there's also growing interest in the possibility that telomeres are checkpoints for cell division. This may have uh, implications for aging, for why cells only go through a certain number of divisions before they reach a state of senescence. And it may also have implications for cancer, which is the unwanted activation of cellular growth in cells that aren't supposed to be rapidly dividing. It's been found by quite a number of workers that uh, telomerase, an enzyme responsible for replicating the chromosome ends, is uh, not present in mature, non-dividing human cells. But then, when a cell becomes cancerous, the tumors have typically, though perhaps not in every case, telomerase reactivated. And so this leads to the possibility that this chromosome end replicating molecule might be sort of an Achilles heel for diverse sorts of cancer, that if you could stop the reactivation of the machinery that copies the chromosome end, perhaps this would prevent the unwanted proliferation of cells in the, in the cancerous state. And there's much activity uh, going on both in academic laboratories and in biotechnology to try to investigate uh, this concept that perhaps telomerase is causally related to uh, activation of cellular growth and perhaps inhibition of telomerase would reverse that unwanted state. Now, what is the DNA like at the very ends of the chromosomes? And uh, interestingly, we come back to our old friend tetrahymena, in this case, not from experiments done in my laboratory, but those done in Elizabeth, by Elizabeth Blackburn when she was a postdoctoral fellow in Joe Gall's laboratory at Yale University, where she determined the first sequence of a chromosome end from tetrahymena. And it turned